Is this you? You've downloaded GameHub Lite because you heard it was faster, safer way to play PC games on your Android handheld. And this is what you got. Sometimes you get really lucky, but sometimes it's a completely stuttery mess. You probably stared at the settings menu, seen DXVK, translation layer, FX core, just given up. What if I told you you were only three settings away from a completely smooth experience? And the most important one is probably one that you set wrong. This isn't a maybe. This is the definitive way to unlock the power of GameHub Lite on your ARM devices. By the end, you'll be playing games that you never thought were possible on your Android device. So let's hop in. Okay, so some quick context. Why GameHub Lite? Simple, the official GameHub app made by GameSir is full of trackers, ads, and sketchy permissions. It's quite simply a bloated experience. GameHub Lite is the community-made, privacy-focused version. It rips all that spyware out, which not only protects you, but makes the app smaller and often faster. But here's the catch. All that power comes with complexity. It's not exactly plug and play, especially for every game. It expects you to be the expert. I want to walk you through the four pillars of optimization. And the first one is the most important. First thing you need to do after you get signed in and download a game is to go to the game settings. Click on those three little dots underneath the game and go to PC game settings. You'll see the compatibility tab. This is where we're changing all the options. You'll see the compatibility layer. This is the Proton or Wine version. It's the engine that translates the Windows game for Android. I've seen so many people pick the first option. From my testing, Proton 10 ARM 64X2 is the best choice. It seems to default to this for a lot of the time. I've tested across dozens of games. While some games might need a specific one, this seems to be the golden ticket starting point. If your game is 64-bit, which most all modern PC games are, you need an X64 layer. If your game is launching, but maybe it crashes after 10 minutes, that brings us to pillar number two, the translation parameters. Think of this as a stability slider. Extreme is the fastest. Compatible is the slowest, but the most stable. I always start on extreme. I want all the performance I can get, but the second I get a weird audio glitch, a weird visual bug, or a random crash, I quit and bump it down one notch to performance. Believe it or not, but for 90% of the games, one of these two are the sweet spot. Stable and compatible are your last resort. They will cost you frames, but they can save a game that refuses to run. Now the game is running and it's stable, but how do we make it look right and run fast? Well, that's all about the drivers. The GPU driver is absolutely critical. You're gonna see a long list. For most modern Snapdragon devices like the Odin 2 or the Odin 2 Portal or even the Thor, you're gonna wanna look for the latest turnip driver Click on that to download it. Turnip drivers are open source and often way faster than the default. For the DXVK version, which translates the DirectX graphics, again, you're just gonna wanna experiment. I usually just start with the newest and I haven't had really any issues. If you see things like textures flickering, try an older, more stable version. And finally, pillar number four, the CPU translator. My rule of thumb, always just select the newest. There are two more options at the bottom of this list, the CPU core limit. I always set this to seven. This lets the system remain stable with that last core. For the RAM limit, it really depends on how much RAM you got in your device. With the AYN Thor, I generally want at least a third of what I have available. Since this is 12 gigabytes, I'm just gonna select four. You could probably set more, but my golden rule of thumb is about a third. And that's pretty much it, the golden formula. GameHub Lite is an incredible tool, but it's not a one-click solution. It's for people like us, people who are willing to spend 10 minutes tinkering to get an experience that no one else can. 
One last handy tip, if you press back on your device itself, then click this little menu here. See that native rendering at the top? Try to enable this in every game. If you get a black screen, you are going to have to disable this. This fixes the latency in your games, and wow, does it feel responsive. If it's using too much wattage and you're finding the battery life is a little subpar, you can always drop it to like 45 or 50 FPS. I leave it to 60, something I just figured out too. I really like this HDR option. It makes the games look much richer in contrast. Super resolution is also a really great way to make your games look way better. I generally leave this at around two or even three. It does feel like it introduces a little bit of latency but it's not too bad, and for the most part, you're unlikely to notice it. So what's one game you got running on GameHub Lite that you thought was impossible? Let me know in the comments below. Do you have any tips or tricks for GameHub Lite? And as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.